Hi, and welcome to our quick glance at the Vibrant Gut Zoomer. The Gut Zoomer is the most comprehensive digestive panel or test um, you can order right now on the market. It's kind of a, a true top to bottom assessment of a patient's status of gastrointestinal health. It includes more microbes than any other test available. Um, I think we measure almost 300 right now. Um, we also include probiotic recommendations based on the patient's own data that makes it easy for you to customize a probiotic. And this is one of our foundational baseline tests. There will always be something abnormal with anybody's gut microbiome and or digestive capacity. That's just sort of a fact of living in the world we live in. Um, so you will always find something, something actionable here. This is also another test that we call a quick win for you and your patients, which I'll go into a little bit more detail here in a minute. To order the Vibrant Gut Zoomer, you're going to click on the Vibrant Wellness tab in the ordering portal, and then you'll notice over in the far right column, Gut Zoomer 3.0. If you click on the first box right next to Gut Zoomer 3.0, it will automatically select to make sure that it orders all of the components of the test. If for some reason you wanted to order only the commensals or only the pathogens, um, you can do that. And then you can also add on the digestive markers to those, um, but then you're only getting a little bit of the information instead of the entire puzzle. Um, so ordering the entire test has the most value as far as interventions for your patient. Let's walk through the report really quick. Let's spend about five minutes with the gut zoomer report. All right. So the gut zoomer report, the first page is sort of your 30,000 foot view. This page has a lot of information that you can derive some basic stuff for your patient as far as interventions go. If you're unfamiliar with the test or it seems very overwhelming because there is quite a lot of data here, this is an excellent page to start with to sort of get your patient moving towards the, the right direction. Um, your diversity indices are going to help you have that conversation about gut microbiome diversity. So everything from toxic exposures to chemicals in the environment, to foods, to inflammation, to stress, um, lifestyle, diet, et cetera, that all impacts that diversity index um, as well as medication use. So that's a really, you know, a straightforward conversation to have with the patient. The phyla distribution, um, this is information that's going to kind of give you an idea of what types of bacteria, some of those broader categories, obviously, when we're talking about phyla, um, not necessarily something you're going to do something about there, but when you look at some of the key ratios, you may see some patterns. So you might notice that the Formicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio is significantly elevated. Um, similarly, if you see uh, proteobacteria to Bacteroidetes ratio elevated, uh, you, may, you may have some more risk for IBS or obesity. Um, so those are some things to look for there on the first part. Then what we do is we summarize each of the microbe panels. Um, so again, if you don't have time or you're, or you're not yet comfortable with diving into the minutia of all the different species that are being reported, you can start with this summary table that gives you an idea of places that you wanna focus your attentions. We do summarize if there were any pathogens found, and then we jump into inflammation. This is a really robust inflammatory marker panel. Most people are familiar with calprotectin, but we go even further and we dive into some additional inflammatory markers that look at various aspects of the intestinal barrier um, and what's there um, to, to give you an idea of what type of inflammation may be present. Next, we look at digestive sufficiency and absorption. So when you see something elevated here, it's a sign that the patient is either not digesting their food appropriately or not absorbing what they're digesting. And then we're gonna look at metabolites. So this is going to be both bile acid and short chain fatty acid. Um, and then finally, uh, before we get to the microbe panels, the additional markers that you're gonna see here, uh, many people are already familiar with secretory IgA, having run it on other tests. So that's present as well as a cold blood pH. We do also include fecal zonulin and fecal antiglyad in here. Now, our wheat zoomer test includes zonulin and antizonulin, which is the antibodies to zonulin, as well as antigliadin. Um, however, we're breaking out on our wheat zoomer test, we're breaking out antigliadin at the peptide level. So it's much, much more sensitive. After that, we get into the individual microbe panels. And this is all, I won't go over each panel, but I will go over the features that you will see in each panel. You're going to have the microbes listed here on the far left column. They're either going to be genus level or species level. 
and you're going to see what the current level measurements are as well as the reference range and anything that is out of range is going to be red and the arrow next to it is going to denote whether it is too high or too low. So we know that bifidobacterium is too low based on the reference range. Um, the star rating is how strong of the connection there is between this microbe and this associated risk over here in the right column based on the research available. So you would be able to tell, for instance, that Enterobacteriaceae has a very strong correlation or association with intestinal permeability. Um, that very likely has to do with the fact that entero Enterobacteriaceae as a genus, they are also gram negative. They produce lipopolysaccharide and that endotoxin is known to disrupt the barrier and the tight junctions. And so that probably has a lot to do with why it's associated with intestinal permeability. So this information you can also find in the gut zoomer guide, which is a downloadable PDF resource that you can access as well. Then after each panel, we also give you the levels of the patient's bacteria associated with this particular area of health that can be found in commercial probiotic supplements. And this is where we really help you, the provider, design a probiotic protocol that is best for this patient. Okay, so let's move on. Who do we order this on? This is another test similar to micronutrient. Everyone who comes in your office is a candidate for this test. Most people are going to have something come back abnormal on the gut zoomer, um, but the groups that you want to kind of focus on would be gastrointestinal, obviously, neurological is a big thing with the gut brain axis, your integumentary system, if you've got folks who have, um, you know, unexplainable rashes and you've already looked at foods, perhaps, um, cardiovascular, huge connection between cardiovascular and the gut microbiome and as far as endotoxin and atherosclerosis risk metabolic or cardiometabolic, um, we know we're looking at obesity and the Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio. There's that connection, but there, there's also the connection between microbes that signal the immune system and can contribute to the development of metabolic syndrome um, if they're imbalanced. And then of course, nutrition and absorption. So we're looking at, are people digesting and absorbing their food? Do they have the right amounts of bacteria that produce certain nutrients and so forth? So I said before that this is a quick win test for you. Um, it gives you immediately actionable items that can bring symptom relief quickly. So whether that is creating that custom probiotic recommendation for the patient, putting the patient on an anti-inflammatory diet or protocol, identifying you know, the risk for SIBO, this gives you a lot of information in one place. So there's always something you can do for that patient that's gonna make them feel better really quickly. So it builds their, their trust and confidence in you and then you can continue to dig deeper into anything else that you, you know, may still need to resolve. Um, so some of the combinations, I already mentioned gut zoomer and wheat zoomer. This gives you that really accurate assessment of the intestinal barrier. So the gut zoomer is going to give you the microbial side and those inflammation markers. That's what the wheat zoomer is going to give us is those actual diagnostic levels of that tight junction status. Gut zoomer and micronutrients, one of the biggest things that people see here is in, you know, the malabsorption, are we digesting and absorbing nutrients? So that's a huge critical piece of this. If you're running a micronutrient test and you see especially fat soluble vitamins that are low, uh, taking a look at the gut zoomer is a good place to start. You also may see correlations with the micronutrient test and low levels of vitamin K2 as well as low levels of the bacteria that produce vitamin K2. So the gut zoomer is an excellent complement there as well. The gut zoomer and cardiometabolic markers, again, you know, the LPS producers and the endotoxemia is a huge piece of looking at atherosclerosis and cardiovascular inflammation. That Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes ratio and obesity is pretty huge, um, as well as the gram negative, gram positive balance there that you'll find um, if you see an elevation in or an abnormally high number of gram negative bacteria that are elevated, that might also be a, um, a symbol for you to, to go back and, and take a deeper look at where the microbiome may be at the root of that. And then again, as the root of metabolic syndrome, as, like I mentioned before. Another common combination that we see is gut zoomer and neural zoomer plus. This is again, looking at the gut brain connection. If you've got folks with lots of neurological symptoms or inflammation, you definitely want to take a look at the gut at some point because a lot of those things we, you know, we tie leaky gut, leaky brain together. Um, many of those dysfunctional 
processes are, are similar in nature as far as what the trigger is. Um, the gut zoomer and fungal antibodies is also a common combination. If you suspect fungal overgrowth in a patient, but you're unsure of whether it is GI in origin or systemic, it can be one or, or the other or sometimes both. But looking for both components, fungal antibodies is obviously going to look for systemic fungal um, overgrowth in the body, and then gut zoomer is going to look globally in the gut for you. Then you've got gut zoomer and organic acids. This is a great combination, and we see this a lot with the sort of like global symptoms that are vague and overlapping and there's not really any one thing that jumps out. These are those kind of you know chronic complex cases that you're not even really sure where to start because there's so much going on with that patient. A gut zoomer and an organic acid test is a really excellent combination to give yourself a baseline assessment of the status of the gut and then what else might be going on and where to start because that organic acids test can help you narrow down you know, what other directions you want to take with that patient. So that's a great combination too. There's a lot more tests. Obviously you can run with the gut zoomer. We have a full menu or kind of a one-stop shop. So you really can't go wrong with tests that you order with the gut zoomer. These are just some suggestions for where to get started. Pricing. The test itself as a standalone is $3.99. If you do decide for some reason you want to order only the commensal bacteria or only the pathogens panel, those are each $1.99. Um, but we do have additional discounted bundle pricing available, so I want to walk through some of those options. The, so I mentioned gut zoomer and organic acids test as a great baseline bundle to order on a patient. This is a fabulous deal. Um, you're basically getting the organic acids test for $100. So it's, it's an excellent bundle price. We do have a gut zoomer mycotoxin tick-borne complete, and this is a great test if you're looking for, you know, you've got a patient that you suspect of having some sort of an in, you know, infection or an exposure to something infectious. That's a good first pass kind of panel to run. There's also the weight loss package too. So I mentioned gut zoomer and wheat zoomer um, as a bundle. There's also one that we can add the tick-borne test to as well. Down at the bottom there, you see gut zoomer and wheat zoomer as a bundle. So that's a great test. Um, again, for gastrointestinal patients, that's an excellent first bundle to start with. All right, and then with those bundles, you're going to order those under the special wellness panel section of the portal. And then collection, collection is fairly straightforward. This is one stool sample, a one-time collection. The patient doesn't need to collect it over multiple days and they don't need to keep it in the fridge or anything like that. Um, it doesn't need to be put on ice when shipped. And the, the collection instructions have our sample you know, acceptance criteria and you can see there, essentially the biggest things are make sure the patient does not dump out the fluid that's inside the tube and don't overfill the tube. Those are kind of the biggest things. Um, you know, otherwise, people tend not to have too much trouble with this test as far as collection. And that is it. Thanks for watching our quick glance at Gut Zoomer. Hopefully now you have a little bit better idea of how to order the test, who to order it on, and how to fit it into your clinical practice.